So in this presentation, we'll have a look at uh, SSH and also uh, key pairs. So uh, the important thing with this is that we want to create a secure connection between Bob and Alice so that Eve cannot pretend to be Bob and also Eve can't listen to the communications or pretend that she's one of the, the entities. So before we start, we'll have a look at uh, how the tunnel is actually set up. So initially, Bob creates a key pair, a public key and a, a private key. So this will be used later on to be able to identify Bob to Alice. So we'll define Alice as the server and Bob as the client. So initially, what needs to happen is that Bob and Alice need to negotiate a secret key, which will then be used for the tunnel. So within the tunnel, we will use a block cipher such as AES or a stream cipher such as ChaCha20. So the first part of the conversation is to be able to negotiate uh, a shared key between Bob and Alice and for Eve not to be able to determine what that key is. So we often do this through the elliptic curve, uh, through the Diffie-Hellman method. And with that we have a key exchange where Bob thinks up a value X and uh, Alice w with Y. Bob calculates e to the g, which is g to the power of x, g is a shared value, a generator, point, a generator value, and p is a prime number that both Bob and Alice agree. So we take g to the power of x, and Bob passes that to Alice. Then Alice takes a random number and does g to the power of y mod p, and passes that to Bob. So Bob's key the secret key will be equal to the value that he has. It will be g to the power of y that he receives to the power of x. And because of the power of logs, that becomes g to the power of x, y. And that's the same as what uh, Alice generates, g to the power of x, y mod p. So once they've generated their shared key, then what happens is that uh, Bob passes his public key over. So this might be, say, GitHub or a secure server here. And uh, Bob then registers that public, has registered a public key on the site. And Alice checks that that public key is on the site and, and is valid. So then uh, Alice takes Bob's public key and encrypts a message for him, a challenge. So that encrypted message is encrypted with Bob's public key. Bob then decrypts the key because he has the private key which goes along with this. So he has this key here is this key which matches that key. Bob then decrypts the cipher to produce the original message and then Alice checks that. So in this way uh, Alice knows that it's Bob that, commun that is communicating. So the keys are typically generated with this command here SSS keygen. In this case we're generating RSA and we're adding on our email address as an identifier. This produces a private key, which shouldn't be uh, released to anyone, and a public key. So this is the example of the public key here for RSA. If we look at an example, say, if we look at an example, If we look at an example here, so let's create our RSA key here. Uh, so this will create in the .ssh folder a file name id RSA, and we'll just overwrite that, and we won't put a password on it. 
Okay, so that's now generated it there. So if we have a look at what we have, we'll see that we have a private key and we should have a public key. And there it's there. We can also use other other methods to to implement this. And we can see that we can use DSA, ECSD, ECDSA, which is an elliptic curve signature method. This is also an elliptic curve method here, or RSA. So we'll just give um, the ECDSA methods a try. And ECDSA. So we have our private key. our public key. So the public key is the one that's distributed and the other one, this is the curve that we're using here and it also has a signature on it. So let's go through the, the key exchange and we'll have a look at the uh, the Wireshark trace in a little minute, but we'll have a quick look to see uh, what actually happens. So we have a client and a server. So initially what happens is that uh, we get uh, this message here, which is a key exchange init message. And in this message we get from the server the methods that the server supports for the handshaking uh, method and also for the encryption method that's to be used. So here are the handshaking methods. There's the Hellman and elliptic <coughs> curve. And here are the symmetric key methods that we can use uh, once we make the connection. So this part here is encrypted with this and this part here involves this method. Okay, so this is the server sending the client the list of ciphers that it wants to communicate with. After this, the client sends back uh, that it wants to use the elliptic curve. Uh, sorry, it wants to use the Diffie-Hellman method here. So this is a, a reply from the client to the server saying it wants to use Diffie-Hellman. And within here we see the E value. So the client sends g to the power of x mod p. So both Bob and Alice will know for this elliptic curve what the g value is and what the p value is. So this is Bob sending the E value over to Alice that is there. So next, the server, so that's the E value. Next, the server sends the F value here. F value is equal to G to the power of Y mod P. That's there. When Bob receives this, he takes the F value and raises it to the power of X mod P and he'll come up with the key that should be used to be able to create this tunnel. Alice will take the E value and raise it to the power of Y mod P and she will get the same encryption key. So after this, they should end up with the same uh, key. At the very end, we see that the client sends back to say that new keys have been generated and now we can move into the tunnel phase. After that, 
we won't be able to decrypt or see any of the communications because they're, they're encrypted. A typical uh, prime number that's used is this one here. So we're using group one here, and this is actually a group two Diffie-Hellman uh, number, so hopefully that's not confusing. But it's a 1024-bit prime number, which should be secure for uh, Diffie-Hellman. So this is it here, and here is the G value. So G to the power of X mod P. So both sides know that this is the prime number, here it is in hex, and both sides know this is the G value, which is 2. So they will take 2 to the power of the X value for Bob, and then do mod of this value here. Alice will do the same. So here are some uh, typical methods that we use. So this is the one that's been negotiated here. It says group 1, but it's actually group 2 in terms of the Hellman parameters. A group 14 has a higher uh, number of bits and is more secure. And these are some of the elliptic curve methods that we see here. So we can have a look at the trace here. So if we open this file up, Okay, so this is the this is an example session. We see the the first packets are the sin uh, to port twenty two. There's a synac, and the client defines the protocol it wants to use. It is open SSH. Here is the server init, and this is what we saw before. Here are the algorithms that can be used. There's the key exchange. And here are the encryption methods that uh, are possible. There's a 128-bit uh, ACS, GCM, there's CTR for 256-bit. So after this, uh, the, the, the client sends back the same thing to show what it supports. And here is the E value coming from the client. And then what we'll see is the F value coming from the server. And then once we have the F value, then uh, we'll be able to create the new keys. After here, there will be no, uh, there will be no more. We will not be able to see any of the encrypted packets. Okay, so there's a quick recap. So the Diffie-Hellman key exchange. We create the tunnel. We create a shared key. Bob passes his public key, Alice encrypts with that public key, Bob decrypts, and then Alice validates Bob. Okay, so with your private keys, make sure that they're carefully managed and always rotated on a regular basis. Always monitor their access and find any writes uh, on them, any changes. Uh, they should always be changed when trusted people leave the organisation. They should be stored in a place where trusted Untrusted people should never have access to them and always know where your private keys are and where backups are kept. Okay, so that's been an outline of SSH.